The last time you was here, did we talk about like what shows and stuff you watching right now currently? Uh, nope. Not that I what know of. I, we yeah. might have. What What you watching right now? Bro, I don't, to be honest, I don't even really watch TV like that. I don't watch no Netflix series, Snowfall, none of that. Power, bro. Really? None of that, bro. I, if I'm not watching sports of some sort, basketball, usually, most likely. Football season, I watch football, but, you know, me, I'm on the game. And lately, sure. I've been training, so I ain't really been having no time to even be on the game like that. But Call of I, Duty. I, yeah, Call of Duty for sure. I got uh, FIFA. I just got FIFA a couple days ago. How you like it? It's smooth. It's, it's a little harder than the old ones that I used to have. I stopped playing, in, I think, after FIFA 20. Oh, okay. So it's advanced a little bit. Ooh, yeah, man. Computer is kicking my ass, bro. <laughs> Love it. Sorry, shows. When I, man, I might... Make sure you like this video watching Space and Wars, subscribe. Bro. That's on Netflix. It's like a little funny series with Steve Carroll. Yeah. I watched that. It was two seasons. I watched that. But I only watch shows to, like, go to sleep to. You also, know, like, bro. background noise. Yeah, I watch it. But then when I, I probably watch an episode, maybe two, but when I'm finna go to sleep, I'm turning it off. Oh, but that's okay. late at night after I'm done with the game. Gotcha. So I'm sitting gotcha. there binge watching nothing. <laughs> binge watching nothing, that's funny. Um, What you got, ooh, what you, hold on, man, real quick. First of all, let me do this real quick. Um, As y'all know, moving forward, these videos and these interviews, I should say, are sponsored by Hilux Vitamin Water. Right now, I got my dragon fruit. That's what I'm sipping on today. That's that's the flavor for today is dragon fruit, red dragon fruit. And these videos are all sponsored by Hilux Vitamin Water. Hilux is a enhanced vitamin water. Um, four different electrolytes sources, complex v, or complex vitamins, B vitamins, B3, B6, and B12. Packed with vitamin C, um, more potassium than a banana, uh, no preservative or artificial ingredients. Shout out to Mark Harris, who introduced me to the people at Hilux. Shout out to Kelly Winfrey, who is putting me in position to endorse this product. Um, four different flavors, strawberry watermelon, raspberry pomegranate, red dragon fruit is which I'm drinking on now, and then strawberry kiwi. My favorites are... Red Dragon, Strawberry Watermelon, and uh, Strawberry Kiwi are like one and two. Or I'm sorry, are uh, 2A and 2B, I should say. Which one did you have, Corey? Uh, I grabbed the uh, Strawberry Watermelon one, I believe. How'd you like it? That mug was fine. That mug was yeah. good. Yeah, Bet. So good. for right okay. now, if you, if you, no, you good. For right now, if you log into the website, drinkhylux.com, and you use the code HYDRATE, you do get 10% off when you buy two more um, sample packs. However, they're in the process of right now of making my code, my discount code, and you will be able to get a percentage off on any of the products when you use my, disco, my discount code when it is um, created. I will be giving you that information when it is created. You can also purchase these products on Amazon.com and on uh walmart.com you can also get the products so shout out to hilux and this is sponsored by hilux this interview um bro welcome back part two man it was bro we, we we missed out on some stuff where we left off on some stuff that we um left out some stuff i should say that we didn't get a chance to tap into the last time he was here um, let me go ahead and intro this real quick for y'all that don't know this, this young man that's sitting in front of me right now. And if you don't, you've been sleeping under a rock. But let me go ahead and intro, intro this. Hey, Corey. New viewers, welcome. Returning viewers, welcome back to Baseline the Goal Line. I am Alan Colbeasy Colburn and in the building with me right now, former Michigan State point guard. Former Iowa State point guard, pro basketball player, inventor and founder of the State Paranoid Basketball Academy, Corey Lucius is back in the building for part two. What's up, bro? 
Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up? I'm gonna have you, brother. Oh man, no doubt, man. I had to, it was so good the first time I had to bring you back for part two, man. And like I said, we missed out on a lot of stuff. Um, what you sipping on, bro? What oh. you got? Of course, again, if y'all was watching the first interview, I am back with my Casamigos Blanco, but this time I tried a little something different. I might I threw a little Tahitian treat in there. But yeah, Tahitian man, treat. I haven't wow. tried to try it. I, I, I like it. I've had it a few times, so I went back to it. Okay. Um I didn't get a chance to go to the liquor store to re-up. So I'm on some virgin shit today. I got my Hilux Dragon Fruit. That's what I will be sipping on. That is my bad. Calls me and say we gotta we when we do the interviews, you gotta be sipping on something. And he don't have no liquor. Oh, I got something to sip on. He ain't got no liquor, is what I'm saying. It's cool though. That's not liquor. Both of us. Salud, brother. Salud. As we always do, my bad. And as we always do, it's always to life. Health, wealth, and last but not least, sports talk. Salute. Also, I want to get a, a quick shout out to uh, Johnny Jones Juice for his and thanks for the merch, bro. The high basketball, um, the high IQ basketball training that he does. I appreciate you, bro, for the merch. Um, bro. Hey, sir. Let's get to it. Hard dude. Oh, you want to jump right into it. You really with the shit. Oh, no. Okay, let's yeah. to no, 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 no. Start it, man. However you want right, to start. Let's, let, let's get to it because I want to bring up something real quick. Um that we first of all, let's 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 get something out real quick before I even jump into this because this is gonna be very detailed what I want to jump into. So, real quick, can we confirm or debunk a myth real quick? Yeah. Um as we, or as you know, after the first uh, interview that I did, I had people reaching out to me and, and people, you know, when, when, you, when they see interviews, when a lot of people see these interviews, they end up having these stories about the people that I bring on. Oh, man, you should have asked him this. Or, oh, man, you should have asked him this. You should have asked him that. You should have asked him that. You should have, uh, I know this about him, this and this and that. So, mm. AAU days, middle school. Um, I don't know what time frame it was. I don't know if it was, you know, sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, maybe even your freshman year. Adidas and Corey Lucius. What was going on with Adidas and Corey Lucius during those times? Uh, man. Well, first of all, let me tell you, let me tell you the story that I heard. I was told that you were sponsored by Adidas. Uh-huh. Um, so can you first confirm or deny that? I wasn't like individually sponsored by Adidas. Our team was, our program was. Okay. But... So what was going on with Corey Lucius with Adidas though then? Oh man, at the time. So we was, especially like growing up when we, the first couple of years, didn't nobody really know who we was, but we were still sponsored by Adidas. Like our, my first year on, DTA or Young Lions, what we were called back then, we had the first crazy eights. Those was our team shoes, the Kobe. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah, so Adidas wasn't really, it wasn't nothing that just like came along because of me, but we was already, we, our coach had already established that with our older guys and stuff like that. But anyway, moving forward, so we win nationals, I think sixth grade, sixth grade we won that. Yeah, sixth grade we won nationals. Okay. And that's when we really started getting real na national recognition and stuff like that. So Adidas really started coming in. So of course our team, like I said, our team sponsored by Adidas. But me personally, I can go get whatever and in any and anything I wanted. Anything I wanted Adidas. Anything you can imagine. It had a catalog that used to come out every every spring, every fall, every season like they do now but every other brand that comes out, they got a catalog. So every catalog, every season come out, they got a new catalog, new catalog, catalog. I'm going okay. to my coach house. I'm going through the pages. I want that. I need this. I want those. I need this sweatsuit. I want that bag. I want these shoes, them socks, that t-shirt, them shorts, any and everything I want in the D to send it in box, boxes to the crib. So you, okay, so you weren't necessarily going through Adidas personally mm -mm. yourself, it was through your coach who was ordering it for you. 
Yeah, of course I can't do. I'm in the sixth grade, seventh no, no, grade. No, I get you. I get you, but I don't know if you had like the like a rep or something like that. No, like a, in a or a direct line to a representative there. Yeah, no. to a okay. So you I, was I, I knew a bunch of them like personally, just because being on the circuit, going to different Adidas tournaments. You know, Adidas had their own tournament back then. It was big. Just going to those different Adidas tournaments, going to the camps and stuff like that at the young age, being on the circuit. Mm -hmm. I knew him personally for sure. Even though I was going, I think I mentioned the first interview, I went to the, the ABCD camp when it was spot run by Adidas when I was in sixth, seventh, I might've been in fifth grade at the time, I don't know. But I'm bumping mm -hmm. heads with the head dudes at Sonny Vaccaro, I forgot what his name was, Sonny uh, that- The one that- um, Passed that, not too long ago, but- Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real good. Isn't I, the one that, um, that told Adidas that they needed LeBron and they, and, and they told him that, they, that he crazy? Yeah. Yep, Sunday I met him, knew him. I every summer I used to see him on the AU circuit. I used to see him all the time. So I built relationships with them dudes myself. I just couldn't really talk to him myself. It was just I had to go through my coach. You had to go to your coach to actually get it. I want to look up what Sunny's. Uh, I think it is Vaccaro. Let's see, like Sunny Vaccaro or something like that. Vaccaro. Yeah, Sunny Sunny Vaccaro. Yeah, that's exactly who it is. Oh, yeah. I, I knew all the big, the, the head honchos and Adidas and everything like that. I just couldn't reach out to him myself. So I had to go through my coach, find what I wanted to tell him. And he just relayed the message. Um, Anything else that was, that was, so at that point in time, did that feel, did that feel normal to you? Of course not. No, I'm getting boxes of, of gear. No, but what I'm asking, the reason why I asked, did it feel normal to you though, is because you're still at a, at a relatively young age, so you don't you haven't been through a lot. Mm -hmm. So if, if you're getting this at this young age, like, do you know that this isn't normal? Not at all. So it did feel normal to you. No, that did. did you, okay. I did, no, yeah, that's what I'm saying. That that did not feel like I was kind of surreal. I'm sitting here like, damn, I could really get all this stuff. Like I'm getting all oh, this. Got stuff. You, got you, got you. You really want to send this stuff to me? Okay. Actually go in here and get whatever I want. Like, damn, this is this shit crazy. <laughs> yeah, sure. This is crazy. For sure. Um, all right, this is what I want to get to real quick because one of the things that we've missed the last time was how you were left off of something. And I want to get to that real quick. And I want to get to it this way. Ooh, nice tell you what I'm going to ask you, all the stuff that I that I thought I knew. You missed a couple things, too. Did I? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to do remember a about that. Go okay. ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, I was about to say, you remember about the uh, McDonald's game that, that came to Milwaukee in 08 that I was not a part of? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We can leave that for another day, though, man. No, we're going to do a part two. Yeah. We're going to do a part just, two. Just like... A, just, just for my older people that's the older our age guys that can know a little bit about you know what I'm saying when the McDonald's game came it came here for me and I wasn't a part of it so just think I left King guys was, I left King guys as a coach there guys was on the coaching staff of the McDonald's game and I didn't play so y'all do the math I'm gonna just leave it at that do the math yeah just leave it at that I, all right so real quick to, though you said we going you know I want y'all to do the math and we're gonna leave it at that how however we have this too what you got as to the reason why that came about. So I just want to walk down that that as well uh, to go to why the we reason as to why that came about. After I came back from that suspension or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And we're talking oh, about the I suspension when you were increased. out of town. Yeah, yeah. Guys, guys okay. Yes. My minutes decreased. I was a starter at the time. I wasn't starting no more. I started playing like 10 minutes a game. Mm -hmm. You know me. I'm yeah. not a cocky or arrogant person. Mm -hmm. So I had a meeting with guys. And I simply asked him, uh, like, what's going on? And, it, of course, he brought back the situation that happened in South Carolina, which was totally fine. But he didn't really have an answer for me as to why it's still going on. Like, I served my suspension. Ooh, I'm so glad I got rid of this border. Mm -hmm. But I didn't like <laughs> not to boast, you know what I'm saying? Not to sit here and stump on oh, you. I got bro, you. No, 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 it makes sense. 
I'm Corey Lucius, bro. Why aren't you playing me, bro? Yeah. I'm Corey Lucius for real. I, I think that's playing. a good place to playing. I'm playing ten minutes a game. Terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten minutes a game. Mm-hmm. So fast forward, we in the meeting or I have, I pretty much tell them, like if, if you're going to play me like this, I'm gonna leave after this year. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna leave. I, I'm not gonna sit here and let you we had upperclassmen or whatever the case may be, but I'm not gonna sit behind the bench when I know I'm supposed to be playing. Right. I don't care what so real quick, man. So, just a small recap. Had a tournament out of town. Y'all ended up having some 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 women over in the room. Nothing happened. Although mm-hmm. you did miss on part one. If you would have known something would have yeah. happened, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and then at this point in time, this was your sophomore season, correct? Sophomore year, yep. Sophomore season, and then guys ended up. Um, just kind of shitting on you pretty much for the rest of the year. Pretty much. Okay. So you end up transferring to Pius. We fast forward to your senior year when the All-American game ended up coming to Milwaukee. We got the likes of DeMarcus Cousins there, Brandon Jennings there. We got Drew Holiday there. We have – keep give me some more names. Man, uh, who all class – oh, man, Alfarik Aminu, Aminu, yeah. uh, Tyreek Evans. Uh, who else? Oh, Demar Derozan. Uh, who else? Oh, eight. Uh, Greg Monroe. Um, man. Um, man, it was a bunch. Of, man, it was a bunch. Of, man, I can't like, even really think about who it. It's a bunch of NBA pros. Right. So, so at that point in time, like I said, the All American Game came there. Mm-hmm. Um, so like you know, Tyreek Evans, you mentioned. B.J. Mullins, Jermichael Green, Tyler yeah. Zeller. Um, I knew one of them Zellers was in there. I was about to say yeah. it, but I couldn't think of it. I'm like, one. Of the, I was going to say one of them Zellers. Willie Warren, Ed Davis, yep. Luke Babbitt, Kimball was there. Kimball was there. Yeah, just to give you just to give you a little bit. So the All-American game ends up coming to Milwaukee, Wisconsin, at the Bradley Center at that point in time. Did you have, Corey... You had all of the All American invitation information, right? Got the invite. Got the the stuff that they sent to to tell me that you invited. Not that I made it, but you know, saying that you are invited to possibly play in the game. I had all that. All okay. Of and take it from there. What ended up happening? So, man, to my knowledge, you know, what I'm saying, of course, not. Y'all know I'm from Milwaukee. I'm not born here. I got we talked about this on a lot the other day, but I'm not born here. I'm from here though. I was raised here, so Milwaukee is in my heart and my blood always is home. But we don't as up up until late because of the Pfizer and the Bucks and everything. But don't nothing happen in Milwaukee, especially not back then. This is 2008. We talking about mm-hmm. don't nothing happen in Milwaukee. Nothing is coming to Milwaukee as far as All Star games and. No, nothing big like that. You know what I'm saying? So why why would they bring the McDonald's All-American game all the way to Milwaukee, Wisconsin? They could have took it to Chicago like it was once was. They could have took it anywhere else, but they brought the McDonald's All-American game here to Milwaukee, Wisconsin for what reason? And for me not to play. But anyway, so, yeah, like the video said, um, so, of course, y'all, y'all know I left King my sophomore year. And coming up to my senior year, I'm all state, all area. Um, you know, I get all the honors besides Mr. Basketball because unfortunately my team wasn't that good. If my team was better, I definitely would have got Mr. Basketball that year. They gave it to the, Demarcus, DeMarcus Phillips. Phillips yeah. No knock on Demarcus. That's my guy. Always oh, been my guy since a young age. But come on, right? Come on, like. Right. But anyway, that's that's yeah. I've been getting you know I me. Mean? I got man. Come on, Milwaukee man. What y'all been doing to me all these years, man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basketball, no. But anyway, so yeah, senior year come. Um, I'm getting the invites for the McDonald's All American game and everything like that. But Coach Guys, Coach March, Mark Mitchell, if y'all remember, he used to coach Custer. They're on the staff. Of course, if you bring the game to Milwaukee, you got to have some of the. T- I don't know. Diener might have been on the staff he too. But I actually, Diener, me and Diener had a cool relationship. So I never put nothing on Diener. Me and Diener was cool. And Mitchell was too, but I heard some stuff about him that I won't repeat. But, you know what I'm saying, that he had a little influence on me not playing as well. But they on the coaching staff, of course. I'm getting invites, so it's in Milwaukee. 
why else am I not on this, on the ballot? I feel like, and I've heard from people's mouths that guys and Coach Mitchell had an influence on me not being in that game. So regardless of, you know, you know, you getting the invites and you ultimately not being on that game, there wasn't anything formal to say, Corey, you're playing in this game, but then something down the line stated that, you know, it was Knicks because of, Mitchell, there was nothing like confirmed no. of it. This is just no. word, kind of word of mouth. Okay. Yeah, kind of word of mouth, off, going no. off, talk and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Do you remember what you were ranked at that point in time? Um, My senior year, I know I was top 100 in the class. Yeah. I finished, I think, like top 60. Uh, I think I was top 10 point guards, maybe top, I might have been like five or six. Okay. Maybe so seven. Have, so, and we're gonna get back to this because I wanna just finish this up. But so if you're in a if you're in a certain ranking and you were getting these invites and everything, were you then deemed an all-American? Or is it like you have to be accepted to the McDonald's All-American game to become an All-American? Yeah, I think it's you gotta be accepted to the game to become it. To become an all-American. So there's no like the top. 30 players in the country or top 45 or top 60 players in the country are all Americans automatically. It's just the people who actually participated in the basketball game are, are quote unquote named all Americans. Okay. So how did you, how did you not, I mean, how did you hear about you not being voted to the all American game? How did you find out that you weren't going to be playing? Um, I found out when like the official list had came out. When the official list okay. and everything came out like that. But I heard the word of mouth stuff, not because of me, but my dad was always our man to my pops. Uh, he was of course a big influence in my basketball career. So he used to have his ear to the streets. A lot of people used to talk to him because they know who he was. They know he was my pops. They know people just in the city knew him. So people would, would go tell him they heard this and they heard that this ain't the reason, this is the reason he not playing. You know, this person has something to do with it, with this, with that, whatever the case may be. But so nothing for him officially was coming to me, but you know, my dad would just bring information to me. So we were just putting two and two together. And of course that's how we feel. We felt and everybody else felt what happened. Right. Okay. So when, um, did you attend the game? Oh yeah, I went, sat in the back box seat and everything. They gave me a box seat and everything. Oh, the staff, the committee gave you a box seat? Um, I don't know, somehow my pops got the tickets, but we had okay. a box. We had a box, we went to the game. And, you know, I wasn't gonna not go just because I wasn't a part of it, but I did want to go. So we ended up going, it was fun, it was cool. Did you meet, did you Salty. meet? <laughs> I bet you was just watching everybody play and you couldn't, and you couldn't play. Yeah. Um, and that's what I was going to ask you. Like, how did you feel watching all of those players that you've been competing against all throughout high school? Some of them that you probably think you're better than. Um, how did you feel not playing? I mean, it, it sucked, to be honest, especially I'm 18. And I know right. I'm supposed to be out there. I know I didn't ran up against all of them and I didn't gave them buckets. If you know, so that USA thing I went to back uh, maybe my sophomore, junior year in high school, all of these no, same no, no. guys. Okay, no, keep that. Mm -hmm. Fini so finish the story, but I want to get back to that. All right. So all of these same guys are at that camp. We had it at um, Colorado Springs out there in Denver, or not? Okay. Denver, but Colorado Springs, Colorado. Right. It was out there. It was the USA team camp before they chose the team or whatever to go overseas. So I'm out there. I average like 18 on. Yeah. On all of them, 18 and like six. Within a, we was there for like a week or something like that. But anyway, I'm busting, I'm killing all of these same niggas. I'm kicking yeah. their ass. Like, right. why I ain't playing? Yeah, of course I felt some type of way, but at the same time I'm like, all right, man, just stay cool, stay humble. You know, yeah, it is probably not right, but I did get invited to some other games, some other All Star games, which was cool. Which were what? Uh, I played in that. It was called the Kentucky Derby one back then. It was in Louisville. Okay. I played in that one. That was the Adidas one. And, oh, I think 
Yeah, I forgot the other one. I think that might have been it. Okay. Okay. Um, did you get a chance? Did they even extend anything to you as far as like meeting the committee? Did you meet like any of the, were you able to go and mingle with the kid, with the guys on the court afterwards? Like what was, what was that? Oh, uh, no, nah, nope. Nothing. Nothing. You weren't able to do any of that? Nothing. Nothing. After the game, we left like a normal fan. <laughs> wow. So we left. Yeah, you would think, man, because, you know, they extended this st- the stuff to you. At least they would have, have extended like an olive branch for you to, 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 to come down and meet the committee, meet the staff, meet everybody else. Because it's not like you weren't getting those those invitational letters and stuff from them. And I guarantee you the people who were in charge of sending you those invitational letters, they were in the attendance. Oh yeah, for sure. They're at the game. They're at the game for sure. And, to- and they, wow. Yeah, man, it was tough. I ain't lie, that was tough. Like that was tough. Cause was I that knew the first for a fact, I knew for a fact, once I heard it was coming to Milwaukee, I'm like, what? Ain't no way I'm not playing. Ain't no way I'm not playing. How how were people when they found out that it was coming to Milwaukee? Um, and I, I got a follow up question to something too. Let me um, make sure I remember this. But after they after they knew that it was coming to Milwaukee, like your your friends and everybody, how were they reacting to it? Like it coming to Milwaukee? Shocked, just like me. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about them not knowing that you didn't play. But just the initial thing that, okay, the McDonald's All-American game is in Milwaukee. Oh, oh, oh the initial reaction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody's like, oh, Kalu, you playing? Oh, we know you playing. We know it's only here because of you. Well, man, you playing for show for show. You, man, you ready for it? You heard anything? Everybody in the city, everywhere I go. How, okay. Um, d- during that time period, too, um, because you know, I, I mentioned this in the last video that man, it was it was grown grown men um when I was in you know Milwaukee around that time period that they would be saying we going to the Corey Lucius basketball game. So I'm just I just need to you know put 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 us put the fans and put the people who are watching inside of the frenzy that was surrounding you during that time. Like even, you know, even growing up, what what age were you ranked the number one player in the country? What age group? I mean, what like what time? Let's just put it this way. What time frame, number one, but then, you know, top 10? Like, was it, was it an extended time period? No, so pretty much after like sixth grade, we won it. So I became, I was ranked number one probably like eighth, my eighth grade year. Okay. Throughout the whole summer. And then okay. by the time the next summer came, rankings, of course, changed, team, you know right. what I'm saying, stuff like that. So by the time the next year came, even during the uh, school years, you know, ranking, man, they'd be on the – even back then, now it's even more crazy. They, they change in they every – They fluctuate week. so much. They yeah, they fluctuate. Or so. I probably was up there for a while. I wouldn't say like a whole year, but it was, at a, it was at a point where I was up there for a couple months for sure. And then you were top – like – even during high school, before the final rankings and stuff came out, you were always consistently like top what twenty twenty five. Yep, for sure. Until like maybe your senior year. Yep, I say probably like the end of my junior year, going into my senior year, and then by the time the end of my senior year is when I was probably yep top seventy. I think I was. I think I finished at like seventy five. No, nope, like it wasn't. It was. It was actually higher than that. I think it was, I think you were in the 60s, but go ahead. So you think you were, you said what, top what? I thought I was top 75. Uh, no, I thought it was, I mean, and you, you could be right. You know, you you probably know the rankings more better than me because it was you that was ranked and not me. Mm-hmm. Um, but during that time, you were top, you ended up being, oh, you were 78. 78. 78, that's what you ended up. Okay. Um, but how was how was the how was it around you, surrounding you? Like the was it too overwhelming? Was it too much attention? Was it what was it what, how was it for you? To be honest, man, I'm 
I'll, th- my attitude that I have now towards like people talking about me being, you know what I'm saying, being all hyped about what my name used to be or what it is now or whatever the case may be, it was the same back then. Like I paid it, of course, when people coming up to you, you recognize it and you know what I'm saying, you understand, okay, people recognize I'm doing this and that, but outside of it, I didn't really pay attention to nothing. I didn't really pay attention to people talking, oh, I heard this and or Corey this and that, 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 whatever the case how may be. How could you everybody. not? Corey, how could you not? Maybe I'm just oblivious, man. I just really don't. That's just my part. I just, I don't care. Okay. I don't care. Even now to this day, when people be like, Corey, you the goat, you, you the legend, you used to do this, you had that and that. But I don't care. <laughs> I get I do. it. I do because I did it, but I don't, but I, I really did. And even back then, I just didn't really care about what people was talking about, but I knew. And even when like people feeling up, filling up pious to come watch us play, filling up King at that point, I'm like, damn, it's cracking. It, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm really in it. It's cracking. And people mm-hmm. really, really fuck with my game. Like, right. They come to watch us play. I go to pious who it's a private school. Mm-hmm. I'm going to watch Pius play anything. You know what I'm saying? Right, we right. had both Pius field in the field house every game. We're going to play Catholic Memorial, that whole gym field. We play at Wisconsin Lutheran against Vincent. Okay. That whole gym is field. No, I'm for sure. More than a college game. So, yeah, I, I felt the magnitude of it, of course. But at the same time, I didn't really pay attention, pay too much attention to people talking about it. Like, So, so do you think, do you think, um, that had anything to like, do you think it would have been the same? And I guess it's hard to say because it's hard to put yourself in this position, but because it wasn't social media back then. Yeah. I, I think it would have, I would have been different if, if, if the times were now. Yeah. You know social media was big. How it is now back then. Yeah. When I was in high school, we ain't had no Instagram one out yet. Yeah, for sure. Snapchat wasn't out yet. Right. Right. I didn't know that was that. All you really had was Google. We were still going on AskJeeves.com and stuff like that. Sure, <laughs> those that's kids, true. They don't yeah, even know yeah, Ask yeah. Jeeves did. Yeah, so, no, they don't. They don't. If we they had, don't. if I had the social media platform that it is now, man, I probably would have thought I was in the league already in high school. And that's probably and that's what right. the so, is right now. So what your, <laughs> that could be it. But I'm just asking, I'm more so like, do you think your mind frame, knowing you, do you think your mind frame would have changed? Like, do you think you would have cared more? Mm. Nah, probably not. Probably not. That's crazy. Like, That's crazy. Like, I've always had this like steady attitude my whole life. Okay. Like, no, never too high, never too low. You right. know I always had this steady attitude the same way. Like I said, my parents always taught me to stay humble and stay consistent. Right. Never right. be complacent. So. I probably would have, like I said, I would have paid attention to it more because I would have been on my phone looking at everything. Yeah, talking yeah. about it more. But at the same time, eh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Okay, so was was the All-American situation, was that the first time that you really, really faced any type of adversity? And as far as basketball? Yeah, as far as basketball. Because, I, I mean, okay, okay, so we mentioned, like, you, you know, the suspension mm-hmm. and everything. Um but as far as like you feeling like you've been snubbed or left off some shit that you should have been played that you should have played, was mm-hmm. that the first time that you faced anything like that? Um, uh, I would have to say I don't know if Mr. Basketball thing came out before that or after. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if the Mr. Basketball thing came out before that, then I'm gonna say no because of course I felt like I should have won that. But if okay. it came out after this situation, the whole McDonald's All American game, then yeah, that's for sure the first time I've ever felt that way. So looking back at it now, then, what is more devastating to you? Being left off for the All American game or not being voted Mr. Basketball in the state of Wisconsin? Man, that's a good question. <laughs> huh? That's a good one. Yeah. More, yeah. I wouldn't say more devastating, but. I know what you're saying, but um, okay. So let me rephrase it. I'm sorry. More of a, of a punch in the face or a slap in the face. Uh, I think probably Mr. Basketball, to be honest. 
Really? Why? Why do you think why? Cause man, I've grown up in Milwaukee. Got you. Everybody have witnessed what I've done in this city for years. Right. Years. Even when I was a sophomore or junior, I was still considered top in the state. Right. You know what I'm My junior year, usually they have seniors on the all area team. My junior year, I was on there. Mm -hmm. I did the all area team two straight years. Yeah. In my senior year, I think I decided not to do it. I didn't even go because I think, yep, I didn't go because DeMarcus won Mr. Basketball and they take the picture after they figure out, they take that picture after they announce that. And I didn't go because he won. So, but you still got the, you still got the honor. Yeah. But you just, you just wasn't in the picture. Yep. So your I senior year, were you number else maybe to do it. Then, so your senior year, were you number one in the state then still? Yes. Bro, I was number one in the state my junior year. And this is right. even with the white bikes and yeah. uh Deontay yeah. and Bree yeah, yeah. and everybody else still at their school. I was number one in the state. Yeah. And I didn't yeah. get Mr. Basketball. I'm like, come on, y'all didn't see me from a youngin. Right. Y'all, man, oof. Just because my team wasn't that good, y'all didn't give it to me. And right. we wasn't even that bad. We was just, you know what I'm saying? We just wasn't watching. Y'all just didn't make it upstate. Y'all didn't yeah. do all of the stuff that DeMarcus team did. Ended up Because yeah. didn't they win it that year? No, they didn't win it. I think they went upstate, though. They did go upstate for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, listen, you mentioned something earlier that I want to get back to, man. You mentioned, um, is this it for the All-American thing, or do you, you want to stay here for a little bit longer? No, that's it. Ain't nothing else to talk about that. We didn't, We got that good. Yeah, I've been left off, okay. and I know the reasons why, and they might not ever say it, but I know why I didn't play in that game. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. You mentioned something about the USA basketball team. The, so, was this like the select team where they were selecting the players to actually go play um, for like the, un, the uh, what is it, like USA under 18 or something like that? Yeah. How did that come about? Man, I, this is, I, uh, I can't remember what year this was. I might have been a sophomore, but of course I'm tearing the AAU circuit up, tearing it up. This is the year I'm going to plenty. And this, so actually, this is the summer where I had, I probably didn't did the most out of anything. Like, I think this is the year I went, I probably went to Adidas camp that was in Atlanta that year. And this is all in one summer. I went to Adidas camp. I went to the Steve Nash point guard camp. I went, we had our AAU tournaments, of course. Uh, I went to the team, the USA Select thing, and then I got invited to the LeBron camp that was after mm. the USA Select team. Mm. I'm so, ah, oh, this is where I'll be so mad at myself, bro. Even when I look back at it today, I was so tired as a youngin that I turned down the LeBron camp. Because of everything else that you everything had going that on. Everything that was going on, bro. I was, I was doing so much traveling and playing so many games and, and just on the plow so ready to go home after the USA wow. thing, because the LeBron thing, it was the Steve Nash camp. Then I flew from the Steve Nash camp, which was, I forgot, I flew directly to Colorado Springs, like to, to go play, to do the Team USA stuff. This is, this is all in the summer, right? This is all in one summer. After what's, AU, what's, I'm going to What's Steve the time Nash. frame? Like, what's, what, what, what is like, do you remember? So, like you know, started, AU like probably starting late March. Maybe right, right, uh, and then it end maybe July. Okay, the July kind of because school starting August for a lot of people. Right, so that's probably from late March to July. I had all of this stuff to do. We had games, of course, that started. Then I had the in between games. I'm going to the Adidas camp, Steve Nash point guard camp. I go to the USA Select thing. I go from like I said, the point guard camp straight to the Steve uh, to the USA Select thing. So I don't even wow. go home. And right. after that, I was supposed to fly straight to the LeBron camp. So I'm like, mm -hmm. bro, no, I got to go home. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. I want to go home. I miss my mama. I miss my pop. Well, my pops was coming to a lot of places with me. So right. my pops, you know what I'm saying? My pops was always there to every camp. Oh, let's, let's, let's just read real quick because, the, you know, if you didn't see part one, please go back and check out part one anyway. And if you're here, you're still here, make sure you subscribe share and hit that notification bell so if you're still here at this point in time i don't ask for this but it's going to help grow this community so make sure you subscribe anyway because you were traveling not necessarily with your parents a lot of time it was with your coach right at the point in time yep yep okay 
Okay. So go ahead. No, no, I was about to say so pretty much he was, I ain't gonna say he was my dad a father. He was like a father figure in in, in, a, in a bunch of my like growing up, to be honest. Because of mm-hmm. the times when my dad couldn't be there, he was there. But my dad, you know what I'm saying? My dad was present at a lot of the stuff that did happen. So you tearing up the you you tearing up the AAU circuit. How do you find out about this USA Invitational? I think they sent something to me. They sent something okay. in the mail to me. Okay. It's like any college would or something like that. And they had just basically said, you have been invited. Actually, like you're invited, you, you're you coming, you know what I mean, to this yeah. select thing. So, yeah, they just pretty much sent something in the mail. If I'm not mistaken, they might have told my coach too. And I might have talked to somebody on the phone about it as well. So mm-hmm. it was like any other normal process. Somebody calling and then they send in, of course, the letter of invitation. Got it. So you get invited. They send you the information. Um, you go out there. How, first of all, who was the coaches during that time? No. Ah, stumped him. I don't know. I think John Thompson might have been one of them. John Thompson Jr. or Big John? Big John. Okay. I okay. think, or no. Or John Thompson the third. I'm sorry. Oh, it wasn't even John. No, it wasn't. Oh, you got the information? No, I'm asking. Oh, man. I, man. I honestly don't know. Let's see. What year was that? Look for this is my sophomore year. I graduated in 08, looking 06, maybe. Okay. Um, but anyway, when you get out there, who are some of the players that are out there with you? Man, the same people we listed in the McDonald's game, really. Kimba, okay. Demarcus Cousins, Brandon Jennings, Tyreek Evans, Alfred Aminu, Willie Warren, um, Ed Davis. Um, man, Irvin Walker, uh, man, the list. Actually, I don't even think Irv might have not even been there. But man, whew. was it USA or was it FIBA? Demar it was USA. It was a USA. Okay, Demar was out there. It was who was on my team? Jeru Holiday was out there. It was me, Jeru Holiday, and I think. Gr- no, Demarcus and, and, and Boogie. Boogie was on our team, man, because he kept making me mad. Because every time I tried, to, man, he tried to be our point guard. Oh, like he yeah, was doing the ball up. years in the NBA, man. Yeah, asking for the ball every time we come down the court. He want to bring the ball up, bro. Just wait. That's <laughs> just funny. Wait, he want to bring the ball up. Boogie said, yeah. "Man, nah, I gotta show my, I gotta show KC skills, man, so they know what they're getting when I get to the league." He's on that same stuff. I'm like, man, all right. But that's my so, guy today too. He's still my guy. That's 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 dope. That's I dope. Seen so him like two summers ago in Atlanta, because I was coaching the Phenoms. Mm-hmm. It was three summers ago, whatever. Maybe like two, three. So I seen him. He uh he had just started his AU team. And he see me, he comes straight up to me, like, Hey Lou, what's good? What's good? I'm like, bro, what you doing? Dope, bro. Like, oh, I just I got this AU team. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, bro, yeah, I'm out here for same time as my team I'm coaching man hit me that's dope bro that's dope so you get so you get out there um I got some I got some questions some follow-up questions to what you just asked me too man um uh, when I do the the rapid fire portion I'm, I'm gonna get to it so you get out there you um you compete in this this invitational I should say right mm-hmm. how do they how do they go about selecting the teams and how did you find out if and if or if not you made the team and did you make the team? Um, I know I asked you an abundance of questions. Oh, so I remember them. I just don't. I don't remember the. An- I don't really remember to have the answers to them. I don't remember none of that to be honest. And um, honestly, if I can remember, I think there were even some younger classmen there. It might have been an O. OC- Nine oh eight oh nine type of thing because if Dexter, I, I'm now that I'm remembering Dexter Strickland was there and he's a year younger than me. He's a year younger than you, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Dex was there. So I don't know if he was like playing up or they just had some 07 they own. It was a was it an 08 and then an 09 thing? I can't remember. So I don't really I, I honestly don't remember. I don't remember how I didn't how I found out I wasn't selected or nothing. They probably same way called. 
and just said I wasn't or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Um. To be honest. So. That's something. We, <laughs> yeah. Well, it just it seems like so. The Steve Nash camp, the USA Basketball uh, thing. You skip LeBron, right? Yeah, man. Do you, re- do you regret that or something? I don't really regret it. I don't regret nothing, but man. Now looking back, shit, I should have just sucked it up and went. Honestly, because okay. the same dudes, like a couple. So the Steve Nash point guard, I mean, point guard camp, it was the top 20 point guards in the country. Okay. So that's what that was. And LeBron camp was pretty much like, so at that time, it was a Steve Nash camp, the Le, uh, Vince Carter camp, um, for like small forwards or shooting guards. And then it was a, a small forward camp. Okay. I forgot who had that one. So it was, I think it was a camp for every position, top 20. Every, okay, gotcha. I think gotcha. it was a camp for every position. And then they bring the top 40, I think, maybe, or the top, maybe the top 20 just from all every position or top. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it was, but I, I got invited to go to the LeBron camp afterwards. Okay. And you were just too exhausted to even make it over here. Tired. I was just too tired, too homesick. Too ready to go to the crib. To so everything. A bunch of them guys that I was at them camps with and them tournaments, they was going. They were like, yeah, we going. I'm going. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going. I'm like, man, I can't even do it. Salty. Right. So, you know, we mentioned this on the last. Um, actually, really quick, let me let, let me do these a couple rapid fire questions for you, okay? Ooh, let's get it. Um. Best hangout spot at Michigan State on a Friday or a Saturday? (laughs) Either Harpers or Sharks. At the time, I don't know know if they still call it that, but Harpers or Sharks. Those were the spots for sure. Sharks was like a little bar upstairs, downstairs. It was cracking. Okay. So it was going down. I ain't gonna lie, they had a little little dance floor. Of course, I ain't never be on there, but. They was on there. You too, you too cool, huh? Yeah, I was. I always be the head bobber. Show right, right, right. Uh, a couple of a uh, couple of these, right quick. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, so but no, it was either there or Harper's. Harper was more like a. It wasn't a club, but it was a bar, but it was bigger. So you could actually gotcha. walk around. They had a dance floor on the, uh, on the, you know, what I'm saying in the center. But it wasn't a club; it was a bigger bar. But it was straight. Gotcha. Gotcha. Was straight too. So, yeah, them the two spots: Friday, Saturday. Either day, they cracking, they going down for sure. And you, yeah, yeah. You what? You what? You in there? If you go gotcha. in there, man. You in there, man? You bound to gotcha. go home or something, man. <laughs> got you, got you. Uh, favorite sneaker to hoop in? Um, it took a little time to find, but. I say the Kobe fours, my okay. freshman year, at the end of my freshman year, I was wearing some custom made Hirachis that we got made because of the tournament. But I broke my foot against- For which? For which team? Okay. Mistake, so I think all the Nike schools got like custom made Hirachis to play in that tournament. So I broke my foot in that championship game against North Carolina. Okay. No, no, yeah, I've been to two Final Fours. I've been to a national championship game my freshman year. You already know what time it is. No, nah, but. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. I yeah. lucky I ain't got my rings. I should have brought them. We talked about it. Listen, man, me. I told him I told him to bring them, too. He did, he did, he did. I ain't going to do it. But no, um, so I broke my foot my, my, my freshman year. And coming back off that injury or whatever, I had to find a shoe that was really, cause my feet made fit weird. I got flat feet. So when I run, I put more pressure on like the outside of my feet. So I had to find some shoes. That Hello everybody, it's your boy. My bad, my bad, go ahead. Yep. so I had to bring, I had to find a foot, I mean a shoe that could like support the side of my foot. And my sophomore year came, I went through probably like three or four shoes until, no, probably like two or three shoes. Cause it was the beginning of the year until our equipment manager brought me a pair of Kobe fours. Of course, we got them mm-hmm. custom made. They are our team shoes. So I put them on and I'm like, oh, yeah, these the ones. These mm-hmm. the ones. I need these. So every time he orders some, some new shoes, I need some Kobe's. I need some Kobe fours. Give me them Kobe's. So I just have like 
everybody else is getting their shoes or whatever. They probably get like two or three shoes out the year. I still get those shoes, but I'm getting my Kobe's too. I need oh, wow. my, I probably have like eight pair of Kobe's throughout the whole year. Mm. Mm. Okay. Um, well, leads me to my next question and you just answered it. I think favorite player of all time. My favorite player. Oh yeah. man. Kobe Bean Bryant. Okay. Kobe the Bean player, Bryant. The best player of all time. Kobe Bean Bryant. You mean that? I do. So wait a minute. We got a gift. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I just got a gift. 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 Somebody just brought me a gift real quick. Oh. So which one is that? It's the uh what year is this? Oh, it's my freshman year. Freshman year ring. Spartans, Michigan State. When we played in Detroit. Got that Lucius on the other side, you already know. So what is so is that the final four ring? Yeah, it's the final four ring right here. Number 34 at the bottom. Yep, I see it. Let's go ahead and slide that boy on. Hold on, yeah, hold, on well hold on. Keep, may as well keep him on. Oh, we got another one real quick. You know what I'm saying? We got another one. This is it. Oh, this is the way right here. We got another yep. one. NCAA. This is my sophomore year. We won it. We won 25 and well, 28 and 9. Is that the right. one you hit the shot, right? Against Maryland? Yeah, this the this the year I hit that shot right there. Engraved in the bottom, got Corey Lucius, my name in the inside. You already know, man. A little some, little yeah, some. Yeah. I ain't gonna show y'all the the the, 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 uh, the big ten boys and got some diamonds. On. No, go ahead and show them too. Oh, Where's that? Going? Okay, man. Yeah. First year, what year is this? Uh, this another one, man. This Michigan State. You already know, big ten conference ring. We won that year. Conference championship, uh, got my name on it. When we finished, we still got the uh, final four logo on there. 34. You already know, got that one. We'll slide that boy on big ring. Yeah. Kind of Last one, we go. Uh, this thing, this might have been my sophomore year. Yep, back to back final four. This one got a little, look a little heftier. Oh, wow, that's oh, that's uh, dope. Yep. Another one. Oh, we got a win. Lucius got a little extra little engraving in there. My number. Yeah. So yeah, yeah man, a little hardware. Little hardware. Yeah, Why don't that don't lead them on. You feel me? Yeah, man, that's dope. Um, so Kobe is your favorite player of all. I mean, is the is the best player of all time. Yeah. yeah. I thought you said something about LeBron one time, bro. Oh no. Come on. Come on. I thought you said he's the best overall player of all time. I yeah, no, he is. I feel like LeBron is the best basketball player to ever play the game. And when I say basketball player, I mean all aspects of the game. IQ, rebounding, assists, points, the know-abouts in and outs of the game. He is the best ba overall basketball player to play the game. I'm not talking about talent. I'm not talking about skill. I'm just talking about everything it takes to be great at basketball, to be honest. Because of course he's talented and he's skilled, but he's not the most talented. He's not the most skilled. But his right. IQ is out the roof. He know how to put the ball in the rim. He gonna go get some rebounds. He could pass the hell out the ball, and he just know the game. So that's why I feel like he'll be the best, or he is the best overall basketball player to play the game. Who's your favorite basketball player right now? I ain't gonna lie, it's a toss up between Kyrie and KD. And they I, both on the same damn team. On the same team. It, it, it's crazy, but I love KD, bro. I love KD. I don't know how you can't like KD. He I don't either. nasty. Seven I don't foot either. And doing what we doing off with and shooting the ball. Seven foot two guard. But man, but Kyrie, he's just, I ain't gonna lie. He's he's me before everybody saw me, before anybody can actually see me. Shit he do. A lot of people in the seat and then seen me doing, still see me do to this day. Wait a minute. I got your that. Handle, your handle wasn't as nice as Kyrie's though, was it? Hmm? I'm talking. I'm talking about moves, counter moves, everything Kyrie can oh, do. No. But he didn't really get all that until a couple of years into the league too. No, 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 I get it. I get it. Yeah. I get. No, just listen, bro. I'm. You know, I'm here for you. You, my <laughs> man. I'm here for you. I'm just trying to figure out if you think that you got the same package that Kyrie Irving has. Uh, I ain't got the same package. 
But my handles, yeah, yeah, they there. You Kyrie got some stuff. You might have way more counters than me. I ain't gonna lie. Ain't no Mike. He got way more yeah. counters than I do. Yeah, but what? but he been in your book though. He been studying out of your book a little bit. Yeah, man, he went on my website a couple times. I seen him. I seen him purchase a few items. It said Mr. Irving. I got the confirmation codes and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's funny. That's funny. <laughs> Let's dive into your pro career, man, because you, um, you know, I, we know about Michigan State. We know that you ended up ultimately transferring over to Iowa State um, when you got dismissed from Michigan State. But we didn't really tap into your pro career. <laughs> what you over there doing, bro? Over there feeling like Tom Brady or Michael Jordan or something. You feel me? <laughs> that's dope, man. You feel me? <laughs> you see mine, too. Oh, no. I, that's why That's why I had to bring them. That's why. Oh, man. Not, that's not. It ain't the same. I had to come out here and bring mine too. That's funny. Um, right there. But we didn't tap into, like I said, we didn't tap into your pro career as much mm -hmm. um, the last time. And, you know, you ended up going undrafted, but you did get invited to um, Summer League, uh, both with the Detroit Pistons, which if y'all didn't see the story from the Detroit Pistons situation and how I met, how I saw him when I moved to Florida, <laughs> Once again, go back and look at part one, um, and then um, so go so tap into that because there was something that you mentioned to me uh, that I wanted to wait until we actually came on to discuss. Mm. Yeah, I do my uh, no, so yeah, so man, uh, my senior year, I didn't really get off. I didn't kill. You know what I'm saying? I had a solid year, though. I averaged like 12 and 6 or something like that, 12 and 5. And this is like at that. Iowa State, right? Iowa State, yeah. So it was a solid year. It wasn't no year where somebody be like, oh, yeah, hell yeah, we finna take you at a drive. You know what I'm saying? You're this and that. But, no, I had a good year. Um, Coming out of my senior year, I got, I, got, I got an agent, and he set me up with a few workouts with a few teams. Uh, Just to name a couple, I went to Detroit like twice. I went to Phoenix like two or three times. Uh, Cause they had a late pick in the draft too. They had a couple. Um, I went to Washington. Uh, came here to home to Milwaukee. Uh, shit, to be honest, that might have been it. Okay. And that's crazy to think that I didn't have that many workouts. To be honest, you know what I'm saying? It's crazy. But uh, you said that you didn't have that many, or that you did? And I didn't. Okay. Okay. But, my agent was like just starting. He wasn't like no name agent, big name agent like that. So he got me what he could. And I'm grateful for that for sure, for sure. But so I get um, the call after two workouts to, with, with Detroit. I kill those workouts. Um, I was actually working out one of them was with Van, Vander Blue. He was at one of them. I think my second one. But I killed those workouts. Um, damn, was that Van there? Yeah, I think he was. But I killed those workouts. And I get invited to come to summer league with him. So yeah, I'm geek. Hell yeah. Whatever. I'm definitely gonna come play with y'all. This is in Orlando. But I've seen you out there. So I get out there. We uh we have a few days of training camp or whatever. So I'm killing. This is at the time. Andre Drummond on the team, Chris Middleton was on the team, uh Casey Peters. I think this was his rookie year. Uh no, no, not KCP. I take that back. Uh, Kim English, if y'all remember him, he went to Missouri. He played for the Pistons for a few years. Uh, Tony Mitchell, Peyton Siva. Um, it was a couple other dudes on that team, but whatever. So I play, I play well. I play very well for this to be my rookie year. I averaged like eight, like eh, three, four assists, maybe. I feel like I played good enough to go to get invited to somebody training camp especially Detroit's or whatever so quick, uh, the case may be. So that year, Detroit got like, they got the last pick for sure. I think like 60th or something like that. And then I think they might've had like the 53rd pick or something like that. But at that time, so I'm, I am kill these workouts. I'm like, shit. I talked to them after the workouts. You know, you got the interviews with them and everything like that. And they basically tell me, like, man, it's a good chance that you can possibly get drafted in one of these spots. Who are you talking to at that time? Front office guys. Joe D. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, Joe Dumars, for those who don't know. Um, I forgot who else was in office. Well, actually, one of my guys that I still talk to to this day, he is an agent now for 
he works for like Draymond's company. It's called Wasserman. His name was mm, da- man. David. Man, God, man, I don't, I don't mind going blank like a mug. But yeah, he my guy. He actually was in the office as well. So they basically told me like, there's a chance you can get drafted at this. You like your game. You 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 came. You've produced at this workouts. We've sh- you've shown us what you can do. We like your game and this and that. So there's a chance you might get drafted in one of these spots. So I'm like, shit, all right, that's a bet. You know what I'm saying? I'm happy. That's all I need to hear. I don't get drafted, but I do get to go to summer league. So we get to summer league. We fast forward. We there. I'm killing, whatever the case may be. They end up drafting Peyton Siva. Because if you remember, that year they won the national championship. They mm-hmm. take Peyton Siva with the last pick. Louisville did that year, yeah. Yep. Louisville won the national championship that year. So they yeah. four-year guy at Louisville, national champion. I'm a guy from Michigan State. I transferred halfway through the year. I finished at Iowa State, not a big known school. We get bounced out of the first round, second round of the, you know, send the tournament. So in the case, maybe I'll get drafted. They draft him. I get to back fast forward again, back to uh summer league. I kill. So summer league in. I'm in the airport. And I think this probably, I wouldn't say this was a, a pivotal point in my career. But it probably could have, you know what I'm saying, could have swayed what had happened after this conversation, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> like the okay. outcome could have been different. So I'm at the airport. I, I'm leaving. Mind you, mind you, I have. From Detroit? No, oh, I'm we, sorry, from Orlando. Yeah, we're leaving from Orlando okay. after summer league okay. happened. So I kind of got a relationship with Joe Dumars already. Because mind you, he from the Michigan area. I go to, I was at Michigan State for a while. So he used to come to Michigan State games and stuff like that. I never really had a conversation with him at that time, but you know what I'm saying? We got some type of relationship, excuse me. And prior, I had two workouts with them. Right. So in the airport, I see him. They leave and I'm going to my flight. I'm going to my gate. He going to his gate. We just come out of security, whatever the case may be. He stopped me and was like, man, you had a good summer league. Like you played good. You got some game. Like, and he, I never forget, he asked me this question, like, so what do you want to do? Do you want to make money or do you want to play in the NBA? And mm. at the time, I never really sat and thought about this question until probably a couple of years ago when I got older, as I look back on my basketball career, my playing career and stuff like that. So at the time, the right answer, of course, for anybody who think back now would have been either NBA or both. Right. Right, NBA or both. Right. Someone will say that. At the time, my immediate answer was money. Mm. Like, I want to make money playing basketball. Mm. Not thinking like shit. I do want to play in a league and make money at the same time. I'm right. thinking my first answer is money. I want to make money playing basketball because this is why I'm doing it. I want to do this for my mom. I want to do this and that. So I want to make money, not knowing that he mm. kind of probably testing me. He might be right. testing. Me. Right. You never know. Probably. Right. I never know. My first response, I want to go make some money. He like, shit, you're going to make some money for sure overseas. Like, you can definitely do that. And that was the end of the conversation. He like, yeah, I'm going to make sure. No, he didn't say like, all right, buy whatever I'm going. He was like, yeah. yeah, you can make, you can do that for sure. Like, I know it's going to be a few teams that's probably going to reach out to you. If there's anything I could do, you know what I'm saying? Let me know who this, who that. So I think right there, my, mm. and I could have swayed. I'm like, if I say shit, I want to play in the league. Or if I say shit, right. I want to vote. He might like, all right, right. You never know. Come, come to training camp. Or I might get a call two days later or the next day from a different team like, shit, you want to come to our training camp? Or another right. team, you, wanna, you know what I'm saying? So, wow. Woo. Yeah, that was crazy. That, man, I never, I didn't think about that until I got older. Until I got older. Probably like a couple years ago, like I said. But he asked me that question and I gave him the wrong answer. <laughs> And you think that could have, wow. So you think that kind of swayed, um, not necessarily swayed, but. <laughs> it it could have been a different, I think it probably could have been a different outcome if I would have said a different answer. Got you. Got you. Maybe some different opportunities. Right, for sure. Okay, so um, where did you end up playing right after? college uh my first year out i went to poland a team called um it was a city called rodham rodham poland 
crazy, man. That, I wouldn't say the craziest year, but that was probably one of the hardest years playing basketball, too. Probably one of my hardest years playing basketball because I'm in a foreign country so far away for the first time in my life. I've never been out the country. I've, I'm in a country, a small country in Poland, too. So it is, I mean, a small city in Poland. Of course, there's other cities that speak English, the more bigger cities, sure. stuff like that. I'm in a small city in Poland. Nobody speaks English besides my coach and the other Americans on the team. Right. And a couple of the young guys on the, uh, or the other players on the team. What What were the, like, is there anybody on the, that was on the team at that time that some of the casual fans or, or fans that are watching would know? Yeah. Uh, my cousin, Um, he's actually, <laughs> crazy thing is he's my cousin. Um. Oh, my mind is going crazy. It's blank right now. Elijah Johnson. Elijah Johnson. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we got some help from the background. I, I got some help. That. Yeah. Yeah, I got some help. But Elijah Johnson, he played at Kansas a few years. My mm-hmm. cousin, uh, he was actually on my team, not to start the year, but he ended up coming like halfway through the year. I want to show you something, man, from, um, fr- from that. And we could talk. Uh, no, we can't talk through it because I want to show what I want to show you needs to be. Remember this? Oh, uh, yeah, I made that. That was my first year over there. I made my look. I think that was my What's going on, everybody. It's your boy Corey Lucius yeah, out here in Poland, just chilling, checking in with Baby, my boy. Sneaker to give y'all an inside look of my sneaker collection that I've acquired since being over here in Poland. So wait a minute. So this like is I just said, in Poland. I've acquired some being yeah. here. Okay. I love shoes. I'm not a sneakerhead, but uh, yeah. I just love dope shoes. Got a lot of Nikes. I love Nike. But, well, look at the look at the clarity of this I've video. I pretty much wear anything. If, if it looked dope to me, I'm, a, I'm definitely wear it. We're gonna get into my little collection right now. So here we go. Just a basic view of everything. Plenty of jewelry. These fives. I still got those twelves, not the twelves, the tens. Yeah, don't like twelves. Got those twelves. They gonna, I'm gonna see them. The taxes was twelves. Twelves. Yeah, 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 twelves. Which one of the black and white tins you still got? Yep. Hey, you still got the twelves, the taxi twelves? No, I ain't got the twelves. I I remember I had wore them out when I was in uh, I was in Cyprus and I just gave them. Okay, these in there. Christmas KDs, Black History Month boys. I got those orange KDs. Nice little pair of uh, foam posit Air, uh, Air Force One. Yeah, everybody got their own, you know, their favorite shoe, what they like to wear, what they like to play ball. I just wanted to see that for a second, man, because this was like your first year in Poland. That's funny. Bro, let me ask you. So how, you know, and of course, we'll get to the rest of it here, too. But how was the pay? You don't have to go into numbers. But how was the pay in Poland? Uh, it was cool. I wouldn't even say cool. It was good, to be honest. Like, especially back then, you would hear a lot of stories about, oh, Ricky's not going to get that much money. Ooh, this, yeah. that. You're lucky if you get 30000 Ooh, this. But coming from where I came from and having a resume that I had, it helped me surpass a lot of the numbers that people were talking about. So, oh, wow. Okay. It was straight for sure. It was on time. Um, I didn't really have no complaints, to be honest. But it was my first year ever really. I'm saying making some money, like yeah. I've never, you know, I'm doing having something that I ain't never had. So it was, whoo, we burned through that. <laughs> Did you, do you get, yeah, funny, do you get, um, at that situation, did you get like, or do they give you like sign on bonuses and stuff like that too overseas? Yeah, I had, a, I didn't have, actually, yeah, they do sign on bonuses, but it'd be like, it wouldn't be like anything outside your contract. So say for instance, I'm signing to play through August through July and I'm mm-hmm. supposed to come in August. So mm-hmm. if it's still July before August come, like before I actually got to fly out there, they might send you 
two thousand. They might give you two thousand of of your August salary. Oh, got gotcha, you, got gotcha, you. Gotcha. You're only gonna get half of your salary in August, but they gotcha. probably you know what I'm saying whatever you want. If you do ask, they send you some money up front or whatever the case may be. If you need it, okay, you can do that. But they did have like playoff bonus incentives. I had incentives for home wins, away wins. Uh, I think it was fifty dollars for home wins, a hundred dollars in American money though for away wins. Uh, we made the playoffs. It was something, and. That was the first year we ever that team that I played for ever top took like top whatever in that league and we took third that that year first year my first year we took third could have went to the championship but them teams the two teams above them, they was they was nice for sure so I got a lot of bonuses that are you know what I'm saying that made the pay even better for sure and everything over there is tax free right and they pay for mm-hmm. do they pay for room and board and do they pay for like they pay for your room and board yeah. Pay for your transportation. Yeah, I had a, I had a some 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 countries to give you a car. I had a okay. car that year. I had a car. So meals? Uh, nope. They didn't pay for none of my meals out there because my contract was hefty enough. They didn't want to. <laughs> they wasn't okay. on that. Yeah. Okay. I had uh, was, other countries that did it though. Another team. But, but it was tax free. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. In the um, like every month. So. You mentioned also, and I just wanted to, you know, to just cue this up in your uh, pro career, but you also mentioned at one point in time to me um, that it was a lot of situations where you felt you were mistreated. Mm -hmm. You want to get into them? Yeah, I'll even, I'll start my, my, my first year out in Poland, like my rookie year, halfway through the year, I was balling. I was averaging, I'm a rookie. This is my first year in Poland. I'm, you know what I'm saying? I'm a point guard. I was averaging like 13 and, no, at the time I probably was averaging like 11 and I'll say four or five, which okay. is solid for sure. Right. I'm starting, I'm playing in the top division in Poland. And they were ready to send me home because the teams were losing, because we were losing. We were like seven and seven at the time. And they were ready to send me home. So they actually brought me into the office and at the, oh, okay. So yeah. So they were ready to send me home halfway through the year. They end up sending one of our Americans home and they brought in my cousin Okay. And, I and they brought him in. So at the time they brought him in, one of our other starters got hurt. Mm. The team told me, they brought me in and told me, okay, you got three games to show us why we should keep you. You got three games. At the time, I'm only averaging 11. Those three games, I had 19, 27, and like 25. Mm. So they had no choice but to keep me. So they gave you an ultimatum? Like they said, if you don't play well, we're sending your ass home. Pretty much. So if that if that did happen, right? And we still lost them games. I, I had them 20-some game points. Wow, but they still didn't they have still a choice them. but to keep you. They didn't have no choice but to keep me because I was – I had 19, 27, 25 with like, you know what I'm saying, four plus assists each game. So they had no choice but to keep me. So had they sent you home, do you still get the remaining salary that you were promised? Uh, They probably wouldn't pay all of it, but it's a way that you can get most of it for sure. Okay. Okay. Or they had so tried to buy you out. Like, all right, well, we'll buy you out. We'll give you this much. And you know what I'm saying, go about your business. <laughs> but the contracts aren't guaranteed like they are in the NBA. No. Got but it. they they are, they say they are. But these teams be so janky. I didn't seen teams change their names so they wouldn't have to pay people. I didn't seen teams do a whole bunch of stuff. I knew my first year, I knew a team on the top. He was in a Euro League team. He ain't wasn't paid for four months. Wow. They do yeah. I mean, it's cutthroat over there. It's serious. It'd be serious. Wow. So where did you track it to say you'll have like, okay, if I don't get paid after a month, because like, you're supposed to get paid either every two weeks or every right. month. If right. I don't get paid, I can literally in your contract you say I can sit out. But who's gonna do that? Right. If you right. sit out, they're gonna be like, man, fuck that. I'm not paying this. We're not paying them no anyway. I'm really right. not paying. Right. Right. And me, wow. Me personally, I just couldn't sit out because I wanted to hoop. Right, you wanted to hoop, right? 
<laughs> Hooper's hoop, right? Yeah. yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, so how many of these um, mishaps Oof. did you end up? First of all, how long was your pro career? Uh, eight seasons, eight years. You played eight seasons. Not um, even eight ones. Okay. We, Sometimes okay. I was home early, leaving late, going to a team late. You know what I'm saying? And so you far. going home early, was it kind of similar to what you just explained with the Poland situation? Sometimes, yep. A couple times. I had a team in, uh, actually, when I was in Cyprus, they did the same thing. Where is Cyprus located? So Cyprus is a little island in between, I think, Turkey and Italy. Okay. It's a little island right there. It's nice as hell, though. I ain't gonna lie. Food good. Mm -hmm. uh, got the, the, the beach. You got the beach out there, the good weather. Yeah, yeah. Ain't lie, but everything was straight out there. I'm not gonna lie. But it was the same situation. But they had... So sometimes you might go into a situation where teams... This happened to me twice. Excuse me. Where a team had an older point guard who's been there for a long time. Mm. Or an older player in your position who's been there. And he's, you know what I'm saying, they got a name for it, so... But I'm coming in there as me, and I'm killing. I'm killing him. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. Be doing as an American, as who I am. Mm -hmm. Coaches don't really rock with that sometimes. Mm. So my in Cyprus, that's what happened. We had like, I think I might have played two or three games. I averaged like 15 and like six. Mm -hmm. Dog sent me home because he wanted his backup. He wanted his older guy to get off. He wanted his older guy to play. Oh, okay. So, are, so, so who sent you home? Was it the coach that sent you home or the owner of the team? That was crazy. The coach didn't want me. The owner wanted me. But the coach convinced the owner to send me home and after that, they fired the coach. Wow. <laughs> so why, you know, if it's the owners, if if the team, if if the owner is there and in the mix, how come he just didn't trump the coach? Because a lot of times, the owners don't be knowing nothing about basketball. Got you, got you. So the coach was like, nah, we have a better chance winning with X, Y, and Z. Let's yeah. see. Let's get Corey up out of here. A lot of the owners just be people with money. Nothing on them, nothing about basketball. Got you. Um, and you said that, I mean, and it happened again? It happened in Macedonia as well. We had an older point guard who has been there. He was there for a while. I played... And that was the time I had a chance to be in like the Europe Cup. So that's one of the top leagues mm -hmm. in Europe, not only outside of your country, but you play other teams from different countries in that top, that same thing, kind of like Euro League, but it's like mm -hmm. a level below or something like that. Got so it. I had a chance to play in that. I actually played in one Europe Cup game, but the same, the same thing with that coach. One of his older guy to play, kept taking me out, wouldn't play me sometimes. And then after a while, he just sent me to the grid after two months. So let me ask you this, man, because, you know, you're going to have some people out there that's watching this, and they're going to say, well, shit, Corey ain't taking no no ownership for nothing that ended up happening when he, when he got sent out there. And then you're going to have people who are aspiring to play overseas basketball that may be thinking the same exact thing. Well, he probably didn't do what he was supposed to do. He probably, mm -hmm. like, he, you know, like, I, like he's no, not taking sure. ownership for the shit that he's saying. To that, you say what? I've always, if you look at my basketball career, I've always done what I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Playing basketball. I work mm -hmm. hard every day. I get mm -hmm. in the gym when we not practicing. I'm in the gym by myself. I put the work in to be able to go out there and produce. Mm -hmm. So I, if it was something that I was doing and I did something wrong, I would put it on myself. But like I said, I, if there, I, there's not one instance that I can go and say, well, damn, I want to fuck that situation up. Besides one situation where I didn't get to go there, but I turned it down when we get into that. Of course, I think I talked to you about that uh, a couple of days ago or whatever. But outside of that, I, I, there, I have no other situation or no other reason to think that I was the cause for any of this, to be okay. honest, to be honest. Okay. And that's um, just, I mean, it could be other opinions or whatever the case may be, but you know what I'm saying? Just coming from you, right. Yeah. What was the, what was the um, and we'll get into that situation here in a second. But what was the, your favorite country that you played in? Um, like living wise, or just like playing? Let's let's do both. Uh, playing wise was probably China, man. China, China probably was the best country I've ever played in because 
Like they literally just put the ball in my hands and told me to go. And right. that's all I need. That's right. all I need. They didn't really speak too much English, so the coaches couldn't really talk to me. We had a translator that didn't really speak good English, so it was always Lou, get the ball. Lou, get the ball. And as they call, they called me Lou. Lou, get the ball. And that's crazy. I got up on there. I got China did uh, did on some some fluke stuff. So some fluke. So the guy I mentioned that used to that I still talk to, who's an agent now, they used to work with the yeah. Pistons. Yeah, David. Because kind of like, you forgot his name yeah. the first time, David. Yeah, gotcha. And he wasn't really my agent at the time, but he had helped me get like a deal if something came across the airway. So the China thing came across, but they had initially signed. Darius Washington, if you remember him. Mm -hmm. That played for uh, Memphis. Yep. Uh, they had uh, already assigned him, but he was still playing in Turkey. Like, he was mm. in the playoffs in Turkey or whatever, so they needed somebody to come replace him until he was done. So, my guy David must have just sent them my old summer league workout. My, not workouts, but summer league highlights from when I played with the Pistons. Mind you, this was like three, maybe four years later after I did that. Mm. So they seen the highlights. They seen what I did. I'm like, oh yeah, we want him. Mm -hmm. Went out there in the Jiffy. I was out there for about two and a half, three months. Came back with a biz act. <laughs> it was nice. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Was, was that was that the um was that your biggest payday? Yeah, for sure. You can get out there in the Southeast Asia, China. Yeah, for and sure. it's Americanized too. Yeah, like, but I ain't gonna lie. The city I was in wasn't. What what city were you in? It was called Zhangzhou. Oh, okay. Zhangzhou yeah. was small. It was like nine and a half million people there. It was crazy. Nothing like nine and a half million. Not like I mean that that's big though. You said huh? That's a lot. Of, that's populated. Nine and a half million people. Oh, D. Yes. Yeah, that's population. Yeah. Like a bunch of rats so, on the streets, man. I bet. I bet, man. So let me ask you, man. Like, how did you? Was it a lot of? Corey on billboards, Corey, this and this and that. Like, were you, were you like, did they have that stuff for you? You mean in China? Yeah. Oh, yeah. China, a crazy play. They didn't have really had, we had team posters. Of course, they had like stuff like that, yeah. but they wasn't yeah. putting us on billboards or nothing like that. But if fans had like little posters and little, you know what I'm saying, like little head things, stuff like that. Yeah, so. probably like big heads and stuff like that. Yeah. That was probably like, brought me back to when it was like, college days mm. college days is when you get on the bus and plenty of people surround the bus want to see the bus see who in the bus yeah. and stuff like that when yeah, they see yeah, you yeah, walk yeah, out yeah. the arena when they see you walk out the hotel all that that's how it was in china it was i wonder if it's the same like that still now in college days because of social media you know what the funny thing is man and I, the reason why i mention that is because i asked this one kid like how would you feel if you saw lebron james now keep in mind this dude is like 10 or 12 years old he said, I see LeBron James every day on social media. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't, like, back in the day, if we had a chance to see a basketball player, because we didn't have access to him. Yeah. There was, like, mythical creatures because we didn't have right. daily access to him. Like, <laughs> I see people, LeBron James on I see LeBron media. every day on social media. That's funny. So I'm wondering, like, if that's the same, like, when, like, at Michigan State now. If they have people surrounding the bus and people trying to get pictures and stuff like that, like mm -hmm. to this day, I wonder if it's still the same. I wouldn't be surprised if it's not, but I ain't gonna lie. I saw, um, so you know when you're doing going through the tournament, they got you go through your hotel, they got cameras and stuff while you're going to your bus during yep. the NCAA tournament. And I saw a clip of Michigan State this year, and I was like, man, it looked kind of empty in there. And I had, I said that to myself, like, man, it looked. Not, not as many people was there when, when I played, man. Because my mom and there was, was there, my dad, my auntie, yeah, my yeah, sister, yeah. sometimes whoever might have came to them games during the yeah. tournament. Like them hotels used to be packed when we used to be leaving to get to get on that bus. Yeah, yeah. And I'm wondering yeah, if, if it's because man, of the yeah, it might be. People might be like, man, all right, well, you know, so I see it. <laughs> right, and that's what I'm saying. Because even like the kid, it kind of shocked me because I'm thinking like, you know. Like you still have some kids that are like super, super um, um, uh, starstruck still. Mm -hmm. But this little kid was just like, man, I see LeBron James every day on social media. I'm like, wait, what? Man, Ain't he a big LeBron fan too? So that's the reason why I asked him, like, what would you do if you saw LeBron James? He said, man, I see him all the time. 
That's yes. Okay. Me. I'm like, okay. Um, so you mentioned playing career. Mm. So living wise, what was the best country? Um, I say probably like <sighs> Cyprus was up there for sure, but I would probably say my second stint in Poland. I went back to, yeah, I went to Poland. I went back to Poland in 2015, I think, 2016. I think so why was the second stint so much better? Was it a different city? Yeah, it was a bigger city. It was probably like the second. It, was, it wasn't the capital. Capital of Poland is Warsaw. It was like the second biggest city. And it was okay. a college town. So we had three mm. different universities there, too. So it was a lot of people that spoke English. Mm. It was bigger. It was more food, more, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Just more stuff to do. It's kind of more Americanized, right? Yeah, it wasn't yeah. all the way there, but yeah, for sure. It was okay. Um, better. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, I just said it was definitely better. So I want to get into some of your... Huh? That was the real story I wanted to talk about. Some bullshit happened in there, too. Yeah, let's talk about it. Go ahead. Man. So I don't know what happened. So I had ended up, this was another place where halfway through the year, our team wasn't really doing good, but I was playing well. This is crazy. I'll never forget this because this part that, this part really sucked. So I think the team had already knew they was going to release really me. This, this is coming like, this This is probably like December, early December, going up into New Year's. And at the time, I had just talked to my coach and the guy, the presidents and everything like that. Like, I want to bring my mom out here. And at the time, the mother of my son, my son wasn't born yet. She was still pregnant. Mm -hmm. I wanted to bring them out there. Mm -hmm. It was so close to New Year's Eve that I knew that they were going to, I didn't know that they were going to send me home. They knew that they were probably going to send me home or they were trying to. So they had already brought in another guard. Mm -hmm. Okay, another, same position as me. Brought in another guard, still allowed me, you know what I'm saying? I brought my mom in. I brought my soon-to-be son's mom in. Um, so they there and who the case may be. So they go home afterwards. It's after, after New Year's, they go home. I probably get sent home, uh, I don't know, a week or two after that or something like that. This is after, oh, wow. yes, this is after I had just brought them out here. They just left. Y'all knew that. They, they had to know they were going to do this. Come on, man. How, how long were they out there before they ended up sending you home? Um... So they probably was only out there for a week. It and was they were still week. there when they sent no, no, no. you home? Oh, no, they, had, they had already left. But okay. they had brought the other guard in before that. Mm. We were, like I said, we were already losing. Mm. We were losing a lot. Not a lot, but you know, so our record wasn't that good. But right. I'm thinking, you bring another point guard in, I'm like, oh, shit. I tell the other American era, he like 6'10". I'm like, bro, watch out, beat it. Because they had already sent the American home. I said, bro, watch out, mm. beat it. I'm going to go. I'm telling them this. Watch, mm -hmm. I'll be going to go. My mom, my son's mom leave. Sure enough, like a week later, they try to send me home. But stipulation, they like, all right, we need you to drop in a, in a cup before you leave and before we pay you for this next month. So I'm like, huh? I call my agent like, hey. Bro, they trying to make me uh, drug test me to before they talking about they gonna pay me my money. What are they talking about? Like they can't do this. What are you? Right. You trying to test right. me right now? They trying to test me right now. I'm like, all right. He like just take the test, uh, and then we'll figure it out after that. I'm like, all right, bet. I hang up. Yeah, I bullshit you not. I go in the bathroom. I pour hot water in the goddamn thing in the cup. Mm -hmm. yeah. I pour hot water. I literally pour hot water in the cup. Right. It was the cup. Called him right back. Like, all right, I'm done. Here you go. I get a call like two hours later. No, eh, maybe not even that, probably like 30 minutes to an hour later. Like, yeah, they said you failed the drug test. They not going to pay you. And you and ooh, this would, I was already going home, but they like, right. they not going to pay you because you just failed the drug test. I told my agent like, bro, I didn't even pee in that cup. First of right. all, how they get the results back so fast? <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, yeah, like out there, they had to send it to the place. They it ain't just out there. there, and during that time period, you got to send it to the place you anyway. Send right. it out, man. Yeah, I'm right. like, it's been 30 minutes to I'm like, bro, how did they get the results back so fast? 
Mm-hmm. And first of all, I didn't pee in the cup. I put yeah, hot water right. in that mug. He like, did you yeah. take a video of it? I'm like, no, I didn't take a right. video of me pouring water in there. He like, well, it's your word against theirs. I'm like, oh shit. Wow. <laughs> I hang up like, all right, whatever. So I don't get paid. I get, I get home. Oh, this done deal. It's over. They didn't pay you. I ain't get paid for wow. the year or that month. That's crazy, bro. That's cr- that's crazy, man. Let's 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 dive into some of your pro highlights real quick, man. That's nuts, man. Because it's like, why? That is crazy, bro. Why do you think they can get away with this? We saw some of these before, but, you know, I I like these highlights. I want to see them again. Uh, Dime. Yeah, good dime. Why are we watching this too, man? What, like, what the hell happened? Why is it froze? Okay. But while we're watching this too, what is, like, some of the... Um, some advice that you can give the kids out there that may be wanting to have a pro, a pro career overseas? Uh, put the work in, first and foremost. Mm-hmm. Uh, the NBA definitely ain't guaranteed for nobody. Take it from me. Being right. top, whatever in my class for so long and then not making it there. The NBA is definitely not promised or guaranteed. So just put the work in and just keep... You know what I'm saying? Uh, I was going to say keep the right people around you, but that's, man, you don't even have to say that to to say that. But as far as getting overseas, just have the right people in your ear, honestly, because mm-hmm. some people might tell you you might not be good enough. Some people might tell you it's hard. It is kind of hard to get there if you don't have the right resume, the right film, um, the right people helping you or pushing you or pushing your name to get over there, but and I've seen people get over there with with little to nothing. So, yeah. And don't be afraid um, to start from the bottom. Right. Me personally, right. I haven't had to, but I know guys who have, and they over there playing right now, and they, you know, what I'm saying they they enjoying it. They've made their way from lower leagues to top leagues. So, don't be afraid to start from start from the bottom. Um. Thirteen or thirty four. Number. Yes. 11. I was going to ask you about 11, too, because I saw that you was wearing that a couple of times. You wore 34 in high school. You wore 34 at Michigan State. Mm. You wore 13 at Iowa State. Why 11? Um, so, I ain't going to lie. Jamal Crawford is one of my favorite players. He just retired. Yeah, just retired. Him, yeah, yeah. Uh, Jay Croft, he is one of my favorite players. And uh, so Michigan, high school, Michigan State, that was all like Devin Harris. I was a big fan of Devin Harris. He's from Milwaukee and stuff like that. So I kind of looked up to him. So that mm-hmm. number just kind of always, you know what I'm saying, went with me. But when I went to Iowa State, I actually tried to get 11. Mm-hmm. I, wanted, I, I wanted to wear 11, but I couldn't. Um, I forgot why. I don't remember why they said I couldn't, but – 13 was available. And I think we might've talked about this too. Uh, Steve Nash is like my favorite point guard of all time. Steve mm. Nash is my favorite point guard. So I'm like, all right, bet I'm gonna wear 13. And I wore it. Oh, this is news. We, we, did, we never touched on that, but that's dope. Yeah, Steve Nash, one of my favorite, well, not one of, he is my favorite point guard to ever play the game. So I wore that my senior year. And then when I went into college, or oh, not college, but when I went to my pro career, this, mm. this, like, even in guys already had 11, so I couldn't wear 11. Guys mm-hmm. that had already been there already. So I'm like, all right, bet, just give me 13. And then when I was finally able to get 11, I got it. Oh, yeah, don't do him dirty. Hey, excuse me, sir. Play, play. Who, in, playing, being a pro, who was your toughest cover being a pro? Uh, on both on both ends, like who gave you fits um, on the defensive side of the ball? Like you trying to to score on them, and who was your toughest cover? Period. Hmm. You ain't go punch nothing. Mm-mm. Oh yeah, good decoy. Is this overseas or just like period? 
Some we, as a pro, as a pro. I want to know, as a pro basketball player, period, this could be summer league, this could be whatever, this could be overseas, who did you dread, I shouldn't say dread, because you, know, you don't fear nobody, but at the end of the day, who did you know was going to give you fits, and um, who was like the toughest player that you had to play against one-on-one? -on -one? Hmm. Like you going at somebody one-on-one, -on -one. and if you can't think about pro, do college. As far as like you going at somebody one on one, um, you being an offensive uh, player, and a, as a pro or in college. Okay, like I said, if you can't think about it as a pro, go college. I'm trying to see as a pro, oh, man. I don't really nobody as a pro, honestly. I ain't really ran up against nobody where I was like, ooh, this is gonna be a tough night. Like, I know I ain't, you know what I'm saying? No, not not yet. Cause I ain't gonna lie, it'd be other Americans on teams. Damn, you know what I'm saying? They'd be straight, but they don't, they don't want none of this more. I got they don't you. want I got none you. of these hezos and none of these cross up not going on. <laughs> But no, you I, hey, but you mentioned somebody too, man. You mentioned Javon Carter. You mentioned Javon Carter before when when y'all played against. Was that you that mentioned him? No, you didn't mention Javon. I'm thinking about some. I, I do so many interviews. I'm thinking about somebody else. I say, yeah, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, it wasn't you. It was Dwayne Wilson that mentioned Javon Carter. Oh man, hey, I go there too. Talking about Javon Carter play for the Bucks. Yeah, listen, man. When he was at West Virginia my last year at Iowa State. This is what he was talking about when he was at uh, Texas A&M. Man, that look, man, buddy got some D, bro. <laughs> buddy dude got some D. He said the same thing, bro. He said the same, and he said, you know, if you talk, or if you hit a couple shots on him, you know, it's, 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 it's okay. Like, he don't talk as much shit as he normally do. He said, but out the gate, he talking shit. And he said he picking up 94. A whole yeah. game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's take it back to college. Okay. I like that. The hard man. When we played Tennessee. Okay. Elite eight or Sweet 16. This might have been Elite Eight. My sophomore year, 2010, man. This is after Kalen got hurt. I think his name is Melvin Goings. Kevin, Kevin, you talking about Kalen Lucas, right? That got hurt. Yeah. Okay. You said Melvin Goings. Melvin Goings, I think his name was. Man, he was played for Tennessee. He was a starting point guard at the time. Okay. The time when they had Bobby Mays. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Prince. Um, okay. Man, listen, dude, picked me up ninety four feet that whole game. I was so tired. I was so tired. I dreaded. I ain't go oh, out. and he big too. I know exactly. Yeah, little running back man. I know exactly who you're talking about. You're talking about this guy, right? Cheer, and he huge too. This dude, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, Melvin. Yeah, him. Dude was out there strong as ever, man. Look here, Pick <laughs> me up ninety four feet the whole game, and then they was just like. They'd bring somebody else in and he'd pick me up 94. But him, dude was yeah. strong. Yeah. Like, bro, hold on, bro. I remember, dude, man. I remember, dude. Yeah, dude. Um, too strong. Anything else you want to tap into with your pro career? Because I'm done asking the questions. I asked everything I wanted to talk about uh, with your pro career, but there's anything else. Matter of fact, let's do this real quick. Yeah, we you still want to tap in. You know what I'm saying? Remember? Yeah, it's something I want to say. Go ahead. The situation, uh, the grease situation after my first year. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, uh, uh, so what was it? After my first, after my first year out, rookie year, this is after they tried to send me home. They don't send me home. I get the ball. From Poland. Yep. We take okay. third in the league. First time they ever take third. I, I finished the year averaging like 13 and six, 13 and five, something like that. So 
this is my rookie year. I get off. And I just made, you know what I'm saying, a nice bit of money. So I'm like, all right, my next year should be valid. Like, I'm good. I'm going to make this. I'm probably going to make six figures. I'm going to go to a nice team and do this and that. So my second year come, my agent hit me with a deal. It was a deal that was in Greece. Okay. Great opportunity. Perfect. Not a perfect opportunity, but great opportunity. I'm in Greece. I'm playing in the league against like two or three year league teams. I'm in the top league. So I'm going to get a lot of recognition. I'm going to be able to go against these top guys because they in the Euro league. So mm-hmm. I'm going to have a chance to put my name out there. So like I said, it was a great situation. I should have took it. Me being young, naive, money thirsty. I'm like, the deal come, but it wasn't for the same amount of money as I just made. It wasn't even, it was less than what I just made. It was like 20 G's later, less or something like that. Mm. So me being, you know what I'm saying? Me being young, which was, it still would have been straight money because I ain't a lot of my first, like I said, I made solid money, but 20,000, I'm like, man, I just got off. Like my first year out, bro, it's my rookie year. It's going to be my second year. I just made this and I just killed, bro. You want me to take a $20,000 pay cut? Like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm like, no, I can't do it. So I tell, I turn it down, fire my agent right away. Bang, bang. I'm like, no, he ain't working hard enough. Fire my agent. And I ain't going to lie. That right there was probably the turning point of my career. Because Greece is a top one of the top leagues. Yeah. Um, So anywhere you really go, I mean, most most countries that you go to probably got one or two probably Euroleague teams. So when I played in Poland, we had one Euroleague team that was in the league. When I played uh, both years in Poland, we had one Euroleague team. If I would have played in Greece, we'd have had three Euroleague teams. Mm. Uh, I went to Hungary, we had one Euroleague team. Um, so, yeah, so most of the places that you go to, they going to have at least one, maybe two Euroleague teams, sometimes more. But Greece was three Euroleague teams. Was was the Greece team that you would have been playing on? Was that Euroleague? And what level of it wasn't Euroleague? Okay, but what level of a league is it? Is it like an A league, a B league? Like what level? So it was still like so. Those couple Euroleague teams that play, they still so Euroleague is a league of its own. Right, That's of just course, of course. teams from different countries, teams from different right. countries. But in Greece, they got their top league. They got their second league. They got their third league. So the league that I was in was the top league with all of these top teams, but it had three of those Euro League teams in there. Mm. You know yeah. So I'd have been playing against them at least two times for sure. And there ain't no three. telling what that could have led to. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. I could perfect out man, perfect situation it would have been in them in Greece. Like what? Yeah, Greek I was going to wasn't bad. Yeah, yeah, At the time, sure. they wasn't. They, I think actually the team is Euro League now. It was like Pan Pan. The, I, I can't even say the name, man. Mm-hmm. Something like that. But at the time, they wasn't Euro League. But I think they Euro League now. Mm. So, so yep. you messed that one up, man. I fucked that one up. Okay. Okay. I fucked that one up. Turned yeah. it down. End up firing him. Get another agent who wasn't worried, really working diligently like he, I thought he should have been or as hard as the, my last agent good. Because my last agent was a guy who just had really started. I ain't gonna lie, he got me coming out of high college. He got me in some pro day workouts. We had a pro day workout in Vegas, like where all the teams in the NBA came to. I was at Impact in Vegas. I went out there for like three or four days. He had all the teams out there. I went to that. I went to my workouts and everything like that. And because that one deal I wasn't happy with, so why did you fire? I was just going to get there. Why did you fire him? Just because you wasn't happy with the deal? Yep. Oh, wow. Okay. I feel like uh, he should have brought something better to the table, which wow. it was. Right. <laughs> it was right. better. Overall, the situation was better. Yeah. The bread wasn't as good, yeah. but the situation was better overall. It was better for the show. Wow. Woo, man, I, man. So, I, man, that I look back at that. I, like I said, I don't regret nothing. Yeah, that's one of them situations where I fucked it up. Yeah, for sure. Wow. For sure, for sure. For um, sure. Plugs. Stay Paranoid Basketball Academy, brother. Congratulations. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. What you got going on. I yes, love sir. it. Yes, sir. Here's Thank the logo. you. 
Um, what is this, man? What 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 is this? What does this symbolize? So, uh, for those of you who don't know, if you are watching this right now and um, seeing this nice figure right here um, logo that my guys pulled up, this is my official logo for my training business. Um, I probably started this month. I mean, not this month, this year. Like in January, I actually started last year. I just didn't really do nothing with it. So I'm really just starting it now, taking off with it and stuff like that. But it's called Stay Paranoid Basketball Academy. If you look up the word paranoia, it's always like uh, um, the images that come up are eyes. So paranoia, you always got to be on your toes. You always got to see what's around you. You always got to be aware of things that's going on with you. So if you look at the image, the inside is an eye got the circle around it to represent the basketball, the, the, the overall circle around. And in the middle, the one that you pointed out, if, if you guys remember, that is the final, uh, the shot that I hit against Maryland. Um, so me and my guy, um, Maine, Demain Reed, shout out to him for helping me bring this to life. We, we spent countless of hours going over this and we wanted to make it something unique to both the name as well as myself. And this is what we came up with. Like I said, the eyes there, the basketballs around it, surrounding it, the whole figure in the picture. And then you got me in the corner, I mean, in the center of it, nailed in that shot. So that's my logo. That's, that's, a bad, that's, a bad, that's a bad plug for the shot itself, bro. This is the, the NCAA buzzer beater shot against Maryland to send y'all to what round was it? <laughs> I ain't I ain't doing no justice, man. <laughs> now, what round did y'all get sent to for when you hit the shot? Uh, I think we went to the lead eight after that shot. Lead eight. It was the lead eight shot. Yeah, yeah. man, if you're going to look, man, pub it, bro. We got to pub it. We got to pub it. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm proud of you, man. I'm happy for you with this. Appreciate um, it. Appreciate it. I know you got... Go ahead. Oh, no, no. Just trying to, you know, help kids get to where I couldn't get to, you know, if you're willing to put in some work, I'm here. You're not gonna do that, man, because you you done you done played in some in some great leagues, bro. So we, yeah, we, that's a fact. But yeah, I'm trying get to get to do more than what I did, get to that league. Yeah. You know, yeah, so bro. actually playing that that McDonald's All American game. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> yeah. Um, sure. You wanna you wanna shout out uh, the other thing, or you wanna wait? Oh, yeah, uh, we can shout it out because then I'll just post it and then it's already out there. I'm probably going to post it before this comes out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, so first of all, shout out to my man, Cole Beasy, my man, Allen, for getting the uh the, the, the water deal, the sponsor deal with the vitamin water, High Lux. Shout out Appreciate to them for looking out. That, my guy. Uh, but me, personally, me and Stay Paranoid, my Stay Paranoid uh, Academy, we have officially partnered with Wilson basketball, become an affiliate, become a partner with them. Um, so as my guy said, when he get his code, he gonna be able to help y'all out and get some discounts on some products, as well as myself. I have a discount code coming out uh, soon. Actually, I just gotta reach out and get it all squared away. But I have a discount code, so you guys can go on the Wilson website, get anything y'all want for a discount for sure. I think it's like 15, 20% off. And if you do use my code, I get a little kickback too. So it's not about me. I'm not really trying to throw that out there. But if you want to look out for your guy, look out. Hey, man. hey yeah. listen, bro. We got to like, shout out to Wilson for uh, allowing me to be a part of the family for sure. Oh, man. Dope. Appreciate yeah, you. man. Well, I mean, look, after the commercial that you did last year, it was only right. You yeah, know, after sure. the, you know, the commercial that you did for him to, to reminisce and go down memory lane with the basketball or with the shot that we just showed. Um, the image of it was only right for them to partner with you, man. And I did I have something to do with that or no? If, if we can say so, yeah, man. No, I'm just asking. No, because I, you know, I know I mentioned it to you that you should be reaching, that you should probably think, reach out. Yeah, to I, think I, I think I had brought it to your attention. He was like, yeah, go ahead. You might as well. So, for sure. Look at that, bro. Look at that. Me helping people right. make moves, man. Yeah, me helping right. people make moves. That's dope, man. Listen, bro. Um, part two was needed. Is it? Look. Because, damn it, it may be a part three after the end of this because the last time is how we got to, man. We, we ain't even touch on this. We ain't even touch on this. We ain't even touch on this. Is it more in the bank? We could always dig deeper into everything that has. If we wanted to sit here for three hours and talk about everything we can really sit here and really okay. get 
to the nitty. So, so listen, okay, so this is what we thing, like this what you we know, do. Of course, man. you you already know the extent of you know what I'm saying my career, everything that have been going on. But I think for the most part, honestly, I think we didn't like touch the surface of everything that needed to be, you know what I'm saying, discussed, talked about for the most part for sure. Got it. Listen, man, from the bottom of my heart, once again, I appreciate you, man, uh, for coming on. Um, I appreciate y'all for paying attention to what I got going on. I appreciate y'all for supporting the platform and trying to help this platform grow once again. If you're still here, so hit that subscribe button. Um, hit that notification bell because I do have more interviews coming. Um, if you have reached out to me in regards to an interview and I haven't reached back, it's not intentional. Um, I do have a full-time job that I have. <laughs> Friday for real. And then I do this in my spare time. So I will get back to everybody who's reached out to me for the people who I haven't said personally, thank you to, I really do thank you from the bottom of my heart for actually paying attention to, like I said, to what I have going on and to helping me grow this platform. I want to continue to be um, a platform where former current, let's just start with current first, current and former high school, pro basketball or pro athletes, collegiate athletes can come on. I don't want to just say basketball because we're not going to limit ourselves, but pro collegiate and high school athletes can come onto this platform and be able to tell your sports story. We can have a conversation about your sports story. So um, if you have people out there that you want to recommend, hit me up, hit me up in my Instagram and um, we can go from there. If you have my personal phone number, you can hit me up that way through text messages as well. And I can reach out to those particular people who you would like for me to interview. Um, Corey, I appreciate you, man. Um, Hi, Thank Lux. You. Thanks a lot for the sponsorship. Once again, he mentioned it, but I'm going to mention it myself again. Thanks a lot for the sponsorship. I appreciate everything that you that you guys are doing for me. Um, you want to do shout outs or anything, man? Uh, No, I'm good, man. Shout out to my, my family, of course. Yeah. Supported me for through all these years his basketball journey, as well as everybody else who supported me through it, to be honest. Uh, I'm happy to share my story with y'all. Um, if any other questions need to be asked, y'all can hit up my man Allen, and I'm sure we'll be he'll be more than happy, and I'm more than happy to do a part three for y'all or, or take it to another way and, and just start a whole new topic or whatever the case may be. But thank y'all for just just those who supported me on this journey, because it's been a long, long journey. You know what's dope, bro? It ain't even you in a new chapter now. Of the book. I am. Like yeah. who still support me too. It's not done. Yeah, Those who don't want to see me play game. in the NBA, I guarantee you I will be in the NBA one day. I just won't be playing. Okay. I wow. guarantee you I will be in the NBA one day. I just will not be playing. All right. Player development or something like that? Development and even if it's some coaching or whatever the case may be, but I would love to do some player development. Um, a little bit of coaching that I coached at Pius has been a thrill, to be honest. I didn't think it would be this fun, and I had a lot of fun doing it. So we'll see what happens with the, in the future. Um, but thank y'all for sure, man. Thank y'all for speaking it to existence, man. Like my heart, man. I really mean it. I really mean Listen, it. One man, just don't, don't forget the little people when you make it to the league. Just don't forget the little oh, people. Never, bro. man. Never. Never. You know, we. We we small bit out here, man. You know what I'm saying? So don't forget me. I'm just I said I said little people then said don't forget me, huh? <laughs> selfish. selfish. Listen, you have been uh watching baseline or goal line. Um positive. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't want to cut you off. NBA finals, who you got? Ooh, good question. You know what I'm saying? You know I came prepared. This is why I threw this song. Yeah, I, like, I think I think I like them. I like them. I like the Warriors. Um, can I can I hedge my bet? And the reason sure. why I say the reason why I say can I hedge my bet is because I got a I got an eerie feeling that the Boston Celtics gonna knock off the sun, the uh, Nets. Really? Yeah, I, I got, got an eerie Brooklyn. feeling. I got Brooklyn coming out the East. But see, here's my thing: if they get past Boston, then they're coming out the East. If if they don't get past Boston. I got Miami, man, coming out the East. Oh, you got Miami? Yeah, if they don't get past, if if the Nets don't get past Boston. Oh, okay. I was saying, yeah, if the Nets get past Boston, Boston the, Nets, the Nets are coming out the East. It'll be the Nets and the Warriors in the, in the championship. 
I got the same finals prediction. I got the Warriors on top. But you know, if the Brook if Brooklyn beat Boston in that first round, we play, they play Milwaukee in the second yeah. round. Yeah, they're gonna beat Milwaukee this time. <laughs> oh, yeah, I like how you think it. Okay, we're on they'll the same page. Yeah, be Milwaukee. Sure. Um listen, man, make sure y'all keep your mental health and your physical mental well-being let's say it that way and physical well-being first because without that you know that's the cornerstone of your life without that you don't have anything so make sure you're taking care of your mental and your physical well-being um once again shout out to my man Corey. shout out to hilux vitamin water i am alan cole bz colburn the host of baseline to go line this was fun please come back please keep paying attention to what i got going on um i do got some more interviews lined up for you all right peace and love Peace, Warriors and Six. You already know. <laughs> <laughs>